All right, so I'm going to hand it off to you, Deja. All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Give Local Platform walkthrough. Uh, my name is Deisha Versa. I'm the Director of Community Programs here at the Community Foundation. My pronouns are she, her. And I'm uh, really glad to be with all of you today. So I'm not going to take up a lot of time. I just wanted to say welcome, um, say a couple of words about Give Local, um, and then I'll pass it back to Melissa, who is really the expert on this platform. So. Uh, one reason we're super excited that everybody's here today is just um, that Give Local is a really big part of the Community Foundation's mission to uplift philanthropy overall and uplift all of the work that our communities are doing uh, to make life better in the South Puget Sound, Thurston, Lewis, Mason counties. And Give Local is, is really uh, the vision behind it is uh, that we believe anybody can be generous, anyone can be a philanthropist. And so making it just more accessible to more people, and then also bringing the community in to learn about all of the different kinds of work that you all are doing in our communities. Uh, so kind of that belief that we really can do more together than any of us can do individually. So supporting each other, lifting up each other's work is kind of what Give Local is about. And. Uh, yeah, so it is uh, on the other side of that kind of a complicated platform. So um, one of the things that we're really grateful for is to have Melissa uh, in their third year here doing Give Local and having a lot of expertise on how this platform works, making sure that everybody can get set up, making sure that it's as seamless as possible to get you the support that you need as you get your message out and connect with the community. So. With that, I am going to go ahead and pass it back to you, Melissa, so you can get going on the technical part. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen to get us going here. All right, so uh, trust me, this is going to be an entire thing of just like me going through a PowerPoint. This is just for the beginning. Um, the PowerPoint is mostly as a resource for everyone um, at the end. Um, but again, my name is Melissa. I use they, them pronouns. Um, and as Stacia said, this is my third year um, doing Give Local and using this platform. I spent a lot of time there. Uh, so I am fairly familiar with it. Um, and if I don't know the answer, I know people that I can get a hold of to get me an answer. Uh, so there is that. And I'm just going to go ahead and do some quick, lay some foundation for today's session. Um, a couple of reminders. Uh, we are recording this session so that way folks can revert back to it if they need to at a future date. Some people who weren't able to attend um, one of the platform walkthroughs can come back and rewatch this, get a little more answers. Uh, we do ask that folks remain muted. Um, unless you have a question, uh, we, I will stop at various points to like answer questions and, you know, for you to share any comments or thoughts that you have. Um, you also can feel free to put questions in the chat box throughout this entire session. Um, Daisha and I will keep try and keep an eye on that as best we can. Uh, Daisha probably a little more so than me. Um, but, and she'll also try to answer any questions that she can in the chat. Uh, but, and also the last little cleanup part is that we do have one more workshop um, coming up next Tuesday. And that one is spearheaded by Daisha. And it is uh, one called Fundraising for Humans that's going to talk a little bit more about how we humanize the fundraising as uh, like aspect of this. How do we talk to our donors, our constituents, just community members, at large in a way that kind of invites them in and you know builds long-term relationships as opposed to just being like hey we're doing cool stuff you should give us money i mean i'm pretty sure none of you do that but you know just in case you need a little bit of extra you know tips and tricks on that one um so i'm gonna start things off a little bit just because it's been a little while since we've been in person and I want this to be a little more informal, but also at the same time, you know, try to let you get to know like us and our staff and stuff a little bit. So like specifically talking about me, um, 
this just is a small collage of you know recent years of my life um, on my professional side uh, i'm a recent graduate from st martin's university i graduated in 2019 i have i graduated with a bachelor's in psychology and a bachelor's in business administration concentrating on marketing um, i also did a minor in uh, gender and identity studies so i kept really busy <laughs> Um, uh, I did before going back to school, I actually worked at local Tumwater Fred Myers for uh, eight years. So that was my first job. I was there for quite a long time. Um, this was at like our five year, it was, was at like my five year celebration dinner thing that they put on. And then I started working here at the Community Foundation back in 2019, right after graduation. Um, and which started as a temporary position and now, you know, permanent full time. And it's been really exciting getting to learn this, um, being here in this space on a more like personal side of things, um, a little bit more about like me in a non, you know, professional, you know, manner. Uh, I am a huge like nerd. I do, uh, this is a picture from Emerald City Comic Con a few years back. I attend this convention almost every year, pretty much every year since COVID. Um, I've attended for many years and it's a good place. Like I'm involved, I like to read comics. I like to play video games, board games, Dungeons and Dragons, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I also like to travel. And back in 2019, I did a study abroad with St. Martin's and we got to go to Germany and Austria. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, this was a fun little like hot dog place. Um, <laughs> that just had a fun bear out in front of it. So naturally you needed a picture with it. Um, and in the bottom, uh, this was uh, back when I was still working at Fred Myers, uh, this was the first year that Fred Myers uh, pitched in for a like spot in the Seattle Pride Parade, and I was super excited, like as a member of the LGBTQ community, to get to attend that and to get to show up with my friends and family. Um, and I did that for a couple of years. Um, more recently, I've been attending more like on the local side and in Olympia, so. That is just a little bit about me. Um, so just a quick agenda for today. Um, we're going to go over the quick terminology, some how to set up your story, how to add people to your story page so other people can edit, how you can look at like your transactions throughout the campaign and then a bunch of optional features that you can use to help boost um, and promote your story. So just some quick terminology because I'm going to mostly use this terminology throughout the presentation because that is the terminology our platform uses. Um, the first is they use the word, they use the term initiative and initiative is the umbrella term that is just the give local campaign. Um, a story that is your organization's individual campaign. So when I'm talking about, you know, like, hey, you know, can you know, like, oh, hey, we're going to talk about, you know, editing your story. We're talking about editing your specific organization's campaign page or, you know, profile, depending on the verbiage that you may be more accustomed to. Um, a story name is specifically it's referring to the name of your organization, and we do that because it helps us um, know on the back end who it is that we're helping and helps us track like the transactions better at the back end as well. Um, so the story name, story title, those two things, that is the name of your organization. Uh, storyteller is any individual who has an account um, attached to your organization story and can make changes, can do edits to your main like fundraising page versus a payment manager is a storyteller who can also view the transaction information. So if you want someone who's gonna help you, you know, put in like a bio for your organization, put in pictures, that kind of stuff, but you don't necessarily need them to have access to seeing your donor information, then you would just have them be a storyteller and not a payment manager. But if you are someone who's spearheading your story, 
then you would want to be the payment manager because somebody's going to have to have some access to all that donor information. Um, and a team is just a group of storytellers. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and we're going to switch over into the live feed of give of the give local platform. Um, so, oh, someone asked who the actor was in the Comic-Con. Um, oh, David Tennant. Uh, he's, he did one of the Doctor Who's, uh, Doctor Who series, and he also uh, played in uh, the fourth Harry Potter movie. I know he's in other stuff, but those are he like the, the two best, things. the best doctor. He was the best. Yeah? Doctor. Yes, <laughs> in my opinion. Nice. No, no, you're good. All right. Um, but yeah, no, I was mostly a fan because of Harry Potter. So, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go ahead and yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to share into the next screen. Do, do, do. Um, so many of you may have, you know, may have already seen this. Um, this is just spsgives.org. This is the overarching um, like public facing side of give local this is where you're this is where you're going to be sending all of your donors uh, you're going to send your friends your family here uh, once it goes live this space is going to be retrofitted to have little icons of each one of your stories there's you're going to have like a little box that shows up with a picture and a text image or add some text in there that you can put in whatever you want to put for that text to let people know what it is that your organization is here for and like what you do for the like what you do in the community. Um, but the bigger focus today and what um, I highly recommend that folks um, bookmark this because I honestly forget this all the time and I have to have a bookmarked um, is to actually log in and edit your story, you are going to go to my.communityfunded.com. And because like once you usually log in once, it kind of just like presets you to like log in all the time. Like it just like does this where it just like automatically signs you in. Um, so sorry, you don't get to see that first like login page, but when it's your first time logging in, it will prompt you to put in your username and password, which your username is always just the email that you registered your story from. And mine does look a little bit different than yours, um, but not by much. Um, so typically when you sign in, you're going to see, um, you're basically gonna find one that says like my stories and it's going to show you if you have participated in give local in the past under this uh, email, it will show up um, all of your different campaigns um, for you to click into and then you'll click the one that you want to work on. But for me, because I have a lot to look at. Um, <laughs> I have to go in at the initiative level first. Um, and so but when you're in here, you get to go to, you'll see, you will still also have on this sidebar, you're going to have all of this information. You're going to have like a dashboard, setup, stories, champions, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so I am going to go in to a random story, which I don't, did I make a test one this year? I don't think I did. I didn't. Um, so let's go into a blank one. <laughs> So I'm not ruining anyone's um, that way. We're just going to go ahead and Arla, are you okay if I just use yours and go with the Mason General Hospital? That's fine. We haven't done anything. So that's, okay. that's a good blank one. Right. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go in here and yeah, this is what you all are going to see. Uh, once the campaign actually starts, you're going to get to go ahead and you'll see how many gifts have been made to your account. Off, uh, online gift, offline gifts are going to be something that we do at our end. So when donors send in checks, um, or if you get a sponsorship, we will be the ones to enter all of that information, but it'll appear here as an offline gift. And the fun new thing this year is that it gives you like a fun little chart to kind of show you, you know, how things are going. Um, 
But the biggest part that you're going to spend the most time in is in the setup, especially in these next couple of weeks as we're getting ready to get going. So what ends up happening is your first section is it's going to go into your details. And your details, this very uh, this about page, this little square, this is that piece that I was talking about that's going to show up on the home page of SPS Gives, the main Give Local website. And this is what your donors are going to first see when somebody is just scrolling through the Give Local website. They're going to see all these little um, rectangles as they scroll through one for every single organization that's participating. And you will have the option to put in one image here. Um, you, the story name, again, is just the name of your organization. Um, you will have space elsewhere to um, put in a more like fancy or engaging title. Um, and then you can also have a little summary here. Um, it's a really, it's a pretty short um, summary that you can put in, but you'll type the text in here and it'll show up here as the sample. And so this is where you can put in just like you could put in like a mission statement for your organization. You can put in a quick snapshot overview of all the work you're doing in the community, or you can put if you are using Give Local for a specific um, purpose, like fundraising purpose, like say you are specifically trying to fund a new, uh, maybe you're trying to support a fund for COVID patients in at Mason General Hospital. Um, and so it'll help them pay bills. And you would be able to put that in here just to let people know like a quick snapshot of like, this is what we're raising funds for. And an important thing to note is every time you make any kind of change, it's gonna, there's this little save changes button that'll pop up. So I just put it in a space bar and it changed colors. And you will want to make sure to click this after every change that you make and before you go anywhere else. So that way you are for sure uh, having that saved. Once it goes back to like the white, then it means that the save, then the change has been saved. Um, another thing in your details is going to be your impact. Um, and so this is something that when after a donor checks out and they've gone through the whole process, um, they've made their payment. This is just something that you can put in like a quick little like thank you that says, you know, like, hey, this is, you know, what your donation has gone towards. Um, and it's just usually something simple, you know, a sentence or two. Um, because you can also, you know, email them later. Um, and also set up automatic emails as well. Uh, but this is also where if you wanted to change your fundraising goal, you can. Um, you can do a dollar amount fundraising goal. You can do a participation goal. So based on the amount of donors that um, give to your camp, give to your story, um, either one, you can have both, whichever floats your boat. Um, and again, you'll make sure to want to save any changes you make. You also have in your story details, you're going to have tags and categories. And so the categories, um, these are all like the general, like the overall, like, like the primary focus area of your organization, um, which sometimes people have a combination of a couple of different things. Um, so you would go in here and you would get to click each one of these. Um, and on the, I'm just gonna go back into the SPS Gives really quick. Um, once it wants to load, there it goes. Um, down here, there will be um, one of the options that'll pop up once we go live is there's gonna be a search bar here. So folks can search for specific organizations or if they are wanting to search for organizations who work in a certain uh, like field of interest. And those are going to be um, where those categories come in handy because it automatically has a little like quick filter for each one of these categories. Um, now, if you want to get more specific, you want to let people know that you're like, yes, we work with animal welfare, but we specifically work with cats or we 
specifically work with farm animals. That is where you can then go into um, tag selections. And tags are like keywords that people can just type into the search bar. And anytime they type that word into the search bar, any organization who has clicked that tag and attached it to their story will pop up in that filter. And so when you go into manage, um, there's already a whole bunch of pre-made tags that are from past give local campaigns. Um, so you can come in here and you can, you know, click these once it loads. Um, Cause of course, internet always wants to go slow when you're doing stuff like this. Um, but yeah, it'll start to just kind of like show some of these things in here. Um, and you choose as many or as look, you know, like you can choose as many as you want um, and then you'll save them and they'll pop in. As you can see, like some of them are starting to pop in right here. And so this is where you'll find which tags you already have selected. Um, and then you can also come in here and you can cancel any of them by just clicking the X's. And so I'm not gonna save that because I don't know that all of those are relevant. <laughs> But if you cannot find um, a specific tag that you want that like clearly defines what your organization does, you can go ahead and click add a new tag and you can type in your own and start a brand new one. Um, the owner, not like super relevant, um, but this would just be who is the main contact. So like if I need to get a hold of somebody um, regarding your story, the first person I'm going to go to is the owner of your story. And if there's somebody else new, um, it has to be somebody who is on your team and is a storyteller, um, but you can go in here and you can change them if you need to. If somebody leaves, if um, there's a switch in leadership, whatever floats your boat. Um, so before I go on past the details, is there any questions about this little section? Do I don't see anything in the chat. Um, hey, so yes, Melissa, we... this is Jen. Hey, good to see you. I have a quick question. Um, can we link to like our YouTube channel and other social media sites to help with some of the storytelling in this platform? Um, yes and no. Um, so that's going to actually be here in the fundraising page. Um, okay. So uh, in the fundraising page, this is where people are going to spend, you're going to spend the most of your time. Mm -hmm. And in like this space down here, which is kind of like your main like profile piece, you can put in URL links. So you can put links to social media in there. Mm -hmm. um, there is also a content zone that you can add that's a little tricky to use, but you can't, um, if you want to go with it, you can. There is some, it's embeddable media. Okay. And that is one that you can use and you can connect like more directly. Like it'll usually have like a third party code kind of thing. Um, okay. So it gets a little bit pickier. Um, I'm personally more of a fan of just a URL link because that's a simple click and put it yeah. in there. <laughs> um, but you can also do embeddable media as well. Okay. All right. Great. Um, so Thanks. That. Yeah, of course. All right. So uh, since we're here, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the fundraising page. Uh, so like I was saying, this is the, this is where you're going to spend the most time in the next couple of weeks. And start, uh, you're going to see this right here is basically a sample of what it, your page is going to look like based on all the changes that you're making. Um, and each of these that has like these little titles, these are all different, like kind of like sections of your story um, or what they call content zones. And the big thing is uh, on the right hand side is where you make all of your editing changes. So the first one is your titles and actions. In this page title, uh, this is where you can type in whatever you want. So you can put in here if you if the purpose of your camp if the purpose of your story this year is to again fundraise for, you know, helping alleviate bills for COVID 
patients, you would be able to put that in here as your page title. Um, you will also have, you can tweak the wording for your donate now um, to make it a little bit more unique to your organization. I would probably recommend keeping at least the word donate in here though, so that way people know this is where they go to, you know, add you to their cart. Um, there's also the share button and the share, it makes it so it's a, basically it's a pop-up that creates like a preset, like little like link and small post that can be posted to a couple of different social media sites. I do believe it posts, it connects to Facebook, Twitter. I'm trying to remember what the other one is. I think it's email. I think is what it does, or it just gives them the link to your page. Um, so if you don't want that on at all, you can just go ahead and you can click this little toggle and when it turns red, it's not going to show up anymore. Um, make it green, it shows up. Um, so the next little section is the media. This is where you can upload an image. Um, unfortunately for this big part, it, like the big main picture, it only lets you upload one image. Um, but some people get around that by making like a little collage or whatever. Um, but you can also embed images down here into this where you see like the text right now. Um, you also can upload a single video and that it has to be a YouTube video though. Um, at least at this point, they might edit that in the future, but right now it's just a YouTube one. Uh, but it's still kind of nice because uh, it'll like it'll just pop up on your picture on the overlap when somebody moves their mouse over top of it, it'll show up like a little play button. Okay, I just make sure that was Deja. All right, cool. And then so then the next little section is statistics. And right now, because nobody has any donations yet, um, and we're not live, um, you can't see it, but right above the donate now button is where these are going to show up. So these are just like it's like little goal markers and stuff, um, little trackers. And so you can have it do for funding. You can have it show your total versus your goal and kind of have keep that little marker tab going. You can just make it show the numbers of total funds raised, the goal that you have, um, or you can hide it completely. And the same goes with participation um, and how many donors have donated to your campaign, so on and so forth. Um, the time left is kind of in um, because everyone's is going to be the same. So <laughs> it's up to you if you want it on your page or not. It's going to be on the main homepage of SPS Gives. So up to you if you want it. Um, so for this main body of text, you will edit that here in your body content you get to go into open text editor and it's gonna pop up this lovely little box um, in which you can be typing it. You can type in a bunch of stuff um, and there's a little, there's some formatting options in here as well. So like if you wanted to, these are the kind of like different sizes that they have available for your text. Um, and you would click it so you would highlight this space. So it's like, okay, well, testing. I was like, okay, well, I want to see what this size looks like. You would hit H1, and that is the H1 sizing. If I want to check the next one, H2, that's a different one. And then you have H3, and there's a different one. So it's kind of like biggest to smallest. Um, and so you can kind of play around with that a little bit for the sizing. I don't know why they don't just have like Microsoft Word and it's just like numbers and stuff and you choose those. It's beyond me. I guess they, I don't know, I guess it's simpler for their software programming. I'm not a software designer, so I don't know. <laughs> but you can also, there's also ways to like do like indents with the paragraphing. Um, you can do like some bullet points, um, formatting, and you can move stuff so it's like far right, in the middle, all those kinds of things. You get the bold, italicized. Um, to put in the, like, to put in like URL links. So like if you want to um, put in a hyperlink that takes people to your website or to a YouTube video, um, 
you can go in here, you would just highlight the text that you want the hyperlink to show up in. And then you would insert it in that weird little paperclip one. Like if I just did www.sbsgives.org. And then you have to be sure to hit enter. Um, and then it will change the text to be like that blue color with the underline. And that's how you know the hyperlink is in there. Um, so, which is important is to always make sure that it turns blue because otherwise something went wrong. Always a little tricky to find out what exactly went wrong, but you know something went wrong if it's not blue. Um, and this little last little box up here in the editing, this is where you can add in images. So you would click that and then you can go ahead and you would just click a picture. And unfortunately, it doesn't let you do a whole lot of editing within the platform other than some cropping um beforehand um but you do that and oh, that did not work out click the wrong button try that again all right so then i can crop and use and it's going to put it in here so and this looks huge and that's because it is <laughs> the tricky part about this platform is because there's not a lot of photo editing capabilities yet it's something that's like on their radar to update in the future hasn't happened yet again not a software designer i'm guessing it's more complicated to put the coding in than i would anticipate um so we don't have that capability so sometimes when something pops up really big like this uh you will have to shrink it on your own using like canva to shrink the image or you can go on to you can usually use like a photo editing site um I can't think of any off the top of my head, but there are like websites that you can just go in and you can put in an image and then it'll shrink. Um, it'll shrink stuff. Um, but yeah, once you have a photo in here, you can also play around with the layout and how it kind of works in partnership, I guess, with the text that you have in there. Um, but it's also always good to kind of break up some of the text with little images. Um, so you don't have to make or if you wanted to, you can make the whole thing just images. Like yeah, up to you. It depends on how you want to still tell your organization's story. Um, so again, I make sure that you need to save changes before you do anything. Um, before you go, before you like leave this page. Normally, for body content, when you hit save changes, it's going to close the box. But because I don't want to save changes, I'm just doing cancel. Um, so. Yeah, so, oh, no, 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 that's good. Good question, Allison. So yeah, so if an organization has created stories for Give Local in the past, can we access those to be able to copy and paste some? Um, I have not addressed it yet, so good question. And the answer is yes, you will have access to those um, unless you are new to um, editing and for Give Local. So if you previously didn't use your email to edit or help maintain a previous Give Local campaign for your organization, um, just go ahead and email me and I can get you attached to the, to the old campaigns. Because it's a weird thing where it's like, you have to be like as an individual, like your individual email account has to be attached to each previous campaign in order to view them. Melissa, you can use ours as an example if you want to show that since it is attached. You could go up to the community found up at the top community foundation of South Puget Sound up above give local 2021 and it should show both years. The gray bar up at the top. It won't show up the same way for me as it does you all, but yes, that's oh, where most okay. people will find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, because mine has like weird other oh gotcha administrative stuff It like slightly changes it because mine when I click that it's going to show me all the stories from everybody. <laughs> so but no good yeah. Uh, thank you, though. So, but yes that's where you'd be able to like normally you would just kind of come back up here, and this is where you can kind of just like backtrack. throughout the whole platform um, it kind of shows you where you went in order to get to where you currently are. Um, so it looks like you might, okay, no. yeah. So again, you will also see 
those changes that you did in the open text editor, you will see it reflected here in your little sample. And then we have just all these other content zones. And this, all these other content zones, these are all optional. Um, you can put as many in here as you want. You can use as few as you want. Um, each one of them will have a little drop down associated with it. Um, so you'll be able to click this and it'll drop down and you'll be able to edit things based on what you want. So like this first one is the community section. And this basically just shows where donors are donating to your organization from. And you can have it show the big map. You can have it down here where it says recent donations. It'll put people's names and the amount that they donated. Um, if they're anonymous, it'll just say anonymous. Um, and you can kind of change a little bit of the maps. So there's the world map, or you can just do one that says USA and it's going to do a funny little like changing the colors based on the area that people are donating from. Uh, so either one you want to use. And again, you can turn as much of this on or off as you want by using the different toggles. Um, so that one, I got rid of the map. Lots of little options for it. You can also even change the verbiage on it. If you don't want it to say, if you don't want the, if you don't want to say community as the title, you can go ahead here and change it. You can put donors. Um, we've had people in the past in sections like this. They, I don't, I'm pretty sure the wording was not like superstars, but you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> you can go ahead and put something in there as well, like that, um, just to make it a little more fun, a little more engaging. Um, and you can also put in a little bit of like, text that like tells people like what this is for um, in here. And so yeah, again, there's just lots of different little like toggles to play around with. And then when you're done with something, you can just kind of like close it all back up by doing that. And always make sure to save. You can also rearrange the order in which all of these show up by simply grabbing those funny little like four lines over here and you just move it to wherever you want it in order drop it on and there it goes um so we will get into some of these other options in more details over here because that's where you do more of like the in-depth work on them um but if there's something in here that's not showing right now, or if you accidentally delete one of these, no worries. You can just go to add content zone and you can put it in again right here. Um, an important one that's new this year that was pretty exciting is there's one that is a rich text section. And that is literally just another version of your body content. Um, and this can be kind of like whatever information you want to put here because you'll get that open text editor and then you can put in new text you can put in new images new hyperlinks all that kind of stuff so you can make it so that there's like another specific story that you want to tell that's a little bit sep that's like separated from the main bulk of your story and you can go ahead and you can utilize this space for that and again, you'll be able to rearrange it and put it wherever you want to. Um, the last thing about this page that is probably the most important and that um, you will want to remember is that this right up here, this insanely, seemingly long link, um, this is the link that sends people directly to your story page. So when we go live, when you start sending out like emails, um, you will come up here and you will copy this link and share it. And that's how people will get here. Um, it is a bit long, I admit. Um, so I personally, when I use like emails and stuff, I just make it, I use like a blank, you know, like I use like the text and just put in hyperlinks. Um, there's also the bit.ly um, is it also .com? I think it's bit.ly.com. Maybe. I could be wrong on that. Um, but you can go there and it'll give you like a shortened URL 
that you can also use to post. People have done that in the past. You know, or you can use it as is. It all works either way to get people to your page. So this one was a lot. Um, is there any questions about building your story and like your fundraising page? Uh, Melissa, I have a question. Um, uh, I think that our team was a little bit confused. I remember last year about the um, champion section. Uh, and I wonder if you could elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, um, actually, I'm going to be doing the champions here in a few minutes. Oh, great. Um, yeah. Are you, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, on this page, the only thing that really um, pertains to champions is how you want it to kind of show up on your page. Right. Um, you can, yeah, in the add content zone, you can have like a champion leadership board if you want to. Um, okay, perfect. Thank but you. Yeah, there is a section over here on the left hand side that has champions and we'll go into a little bit more details on that one in just a short bit. Right. Um, Oh, it is just bit.ly. Okay, okay, that's oh, apparently it's not a .com. So hey, winner makes that even easier to try and remember. Um, yeah, Daisha put in some of those. If you need to shorten your URL links, um, you can go there and go to those websites. Um, so the last couple of things here that you find in the setup. Um, yes, I want. So here's also a nifty thing. If you try to leave a page that you were working on and you didn't save your changes, it's going to pop up this little box that says, are you sure? Um, and in this case, I am sure. I do want to leave. Um, <laughs> but this payment section, uh, feel free to ignore it. Uh, I'm just only showing you so that way you know that it exists and that we're just going to ignore it because all the payments are going through Community Foundation and we are going to be sending you all of the funds after Give Local ends. So there's nothing in here that's particularly exciting or that you would need to edit. Um, the emails is, again, that's a new feature this year that's pretty exciting. Um, if you have you know, only a few staff members or you have like all volunteers and it's hard to keep up with donor engagement and stewardship, um, one way to kind of like at least give a small initial thank you and like start that stewardship process is you can set up these automatic emails that is sent to every like any donor who donates to your page and you can edit this however you want you can put in some text down here images hyperlinks again um, you can have it so there's a reply address um, it automatically fills in originally as the replies um, as from the owner of your story um, but you can also add in more if you want to um, you can put an email subject line. And this is just something that kind of like starts that stewardship process. Um, we also still encourage folks to, um, when you do get the chance, to maybe send more personalized um, contacts with your donors after Give Local has ended. But I know it's already hard enough trying to keep up with Give Local while it's live. Um, and so it's like to try and be like, oh, I'm going to write a thank you card after every single donor is a, like, I applaud anyone who does it, like, and keeps up with it during Give Local while it's live. Um, <laughs> but if you want to um, just have, save yourself a little bit of stress and send out the more personalized stuff after Give Local has ended, you can just start it off by building this thank you letter, uh, this thank you email that just automatically goes out. Um, the last part that's important on this page under the setup is publishing. Um, after you have finished editing everything that you want to in preparation for Give Local, you need to go up into, you will hit submit for review. And when that happens, you will temporarily lose capability of editing your um, anything in your story uh, until Community Foundation staff has had a chance to approve it. Uh, and basically the approval portion is at, for us because we're not like, it's it's pretty much, it's yours. You do what you want with it. We're just gonna do like a cursory glance to make sure that you're not like advertising anything illegal. Um, 
you're not being like, hey, we're, you know, we're selling fireworks outside of the few designated times of the year that we're allowed to sell fireworks. Like, we're going to be like, whoa, whoa, that needs to go. Um, but for the most part, you can put whatever you want in here. Um, we do ask that all, well, we require that all organizations have submit for, have hit submit for review by the end of the day on October 24th. Um, so that way we have time to go through all of it, um, make sure to catch any hiccups um, before early giving starts because early giving starts November 1st. So mm -hmm. we wanna make sure we have this all out of the way. And once you have submitted for review and it's been approved, you will have access to edit again. And this is the page also once you are approved that you will come to and on the on November 1st, you will come in here into publishing and you will want to click publish and display. So that way um, your specific story will go and show up live on the SPS Gives website. Um, because for whatever weird reason, I still keep bugging our software people about it. I do not have a way to just like turn on it turn those on for everybody all at once. Mm. Um, so since I do not, uh, so we do ask that you as an, like individually go in and you publish it. So that way we don't have to go in and click it for every single um, campaign. Cause this year is like our biggest year yet. Uh, we have 91 registered organizations. So, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, so, but yeah, you'll just come in here, you'll hit publish, you'll hit display. Boom. Um, we did have the automated. Oh, maybe we did, and I just uh, never used it. Uh, sorry, let me point out that maybe it was your last. Maybe the emails was your last year, um, mm -hmm. and I just missed it. That is entirely plausible. <laughs> but um, yeah. And, can I just make a, a quick comment? I mean, thanks for sharing all that about the communications. And I really liked when you sent the acknowledgement letter to all of us telling us how the campaign went for our organization and then explained how the match worked, because I was able to share that with the donors that actually contributed to it and share it within the organization. And so two thumbs up on that. So I hope that you'll continue doing that again. And, and you know, in preparation for the campaign, I've already started contacting some of the donors to say, hey, just a quick reminder, thanks. This is how great we did last year. We hope that you know, you'll know you be supportive again this year. So it's a, it's a really useful communication. I'm really trying to get some mileage out of that. So thanks for doing that. All right. Okay. Well, for, yeah, and just like this last little one, this is just the original, this idea submission, that is just what you all submitted when you first registered your campaign. If you ever need to refer back to something that was on here. Um, not super exciting, but if you really wanted to look at it, you can. Um, um, no, once you are published, you still, you can still make edits. Um, hmm. So that's also, yeah, an important note that, yeah, once you are published, um, even if it's live and your campaign's on the main profile page and stuff like that, you can still make edits throughout all of Give Local. But again, we're still going to be watching, making sure not doing anything illegal on here because nobody wants to get in trouble for this. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're going to, I'm going to bump down into some of these other ones really quick. Um, and I'm going to go first to Teams and this is the space, this is your, this is everyone who has access to your story. Um, and if they're in here, you'll see name, their role. Uh, you can toggle this payment manager on and off. If for whatever reason, nobody on your team has payment manager, um, contact me and I will turn it on for at least one person, because once one person has it turned on, they can turn it on for everybody else. Um, or if you just want everyone to be a payment manager, I can go ahead and turn those on that way as well. You'll have the email that's attached uh, to that account name, and then whether or not they are actively, uh, if they've activated their account with this story. 
Um, if you do want to add another person to help edit stuff, you just come up here, invite new team member, you put in their email and hit send. It's also important to note that when you send this, it sends an automatic email from info at communityfunded.com. And the link that it sends is only good for 48 hours. So, but you can resend this as many times as you need to. Um, and the same on my end too, if you have not signed in yet and your account is not active, um, I can resend it to you, send you a new link. Not a big deal. It takes all of like 30 seconds. So more than happy to be able to do that. Uh, the other one that's pretty important is your transactions. Um, again, nothing's in there yet. No one has any donations. We're not live, but uh, it's pretty uh, robust in that you can filter things, um, viewing all the transactions. It gives you a quick overview of everything that's going, that all of your donations and stuff. Um, and down here is where you will get like the detailed details of each donor. You can export all of this information at any point during Give Local, after Give Local. Um, I suppose if you wanted to before Give Local and get like a blank page started. Um, but something that we do ask is to pay attention is to scroll over here. Um, is be aware of down here if folks are, this is where you'll find out if somebody is anonymous or not. Mm -hmm. um, because it'll say like it'll have like this publicly displayed section, these two different comments, these two different sections that say publicly. Um, it might end up saying, you know, like do not publicly state my name. So then we just ask that you kind of respect their privacy and um, don't post them on any public like if you want to go ahead and like some people have thanked donors like they do like a daily uh like thank you to all their donors on their social media and they put like the donor's name and stuff like that um on a post just double check here if it says that they don't want to be publicly displayed you just don't include them on that those kind of thank yous um this doesn't necessarily mean that they don't want you to send them a thank you letter after give locals over um this is just asking if they want to be publicly acknowledged. Um, and yeah, so that is that on this one. Uh, this is also where you can view if you have like champions and stuff, you can see what they've raised in this area. Uh, but after those two, is there any, before I move on to the champions, is there any quick questions about adding people to your team or like viewing the transactions from your donors. Yeah, can you just recap real quick the permissions for the, um, that button for the transaction, what was that little green button? What was that called? Oh, the payment manager or what? Oh, what yeah, that yeah. Was that? Uh, so when you're on team, you, the payment manager, this is, yeah, the payment manager has to be turned on and toggle and the toggle has to be green in uh -huh. order for somebody to be able to view the transactions. And okay, so we'll need to add, we can add other people to that. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. As long All as right. you have at least one team member who already has payment manager access and authority, they can turn it on for other. Okay, people. that sounds good. All right, perfect. Thanks. Perfect. All right, sweet. So then looking at champions, um, again, you kind of come over here, this left hand menu. Um, you'll click champions uh, for here. Um, you will get to see um, as like a storyteller and as um, uh, I do believe as you have to be a payment manager because there is money involved in it. Um, in order to view the champions, you have to have payment manager turned on, but you can see um, who all is the champions, like what their, you know, the name, their email, goals, all that kind of stuff. You'll find out if they're active, if they're, if you've had to suspend them for any reason um, or close their account. You can do that here um, because we don't have any particularly, I don't have any, actually, you know, let us actually see if I can find one from last year. Um, I think it might still show me some 
um, during last year. So you all can see like an actual sample of what it looks like. Um, get that, uh, ah, perfect. So cool. So this is showing me, this is obviously a little bit more robust because this is showing champions from all of the different uh, stories uh, last year, but it'll be, it's similar to what you all will see in which you'll see like who the champions are, um, how many gifts they raised, if they were new donors, that kind of stuff, um, different shares that they had. And you'll get to see like their name, email, um, and you can do some level of editing on behalf of your champions um, in which you can do some, you know, like here's like a little like automatic, like again, similar to the one that you have on your story, um, on your little story card, just a short little like, hey, this is why I support this organization and you should too. Um, you can help them set a new goal, that kind of stuff. You can edit that part. The, or, uh, the individual champion has to be the one to actually sign up, which now that I'm realizing it, I kind of jumped the gun in that I didn't even explain what a champion is. Um, <laughs> so I guess before I keep going any deeper into this, um, a champion is basically anybody who agrees to sign up on behalf of your organization to help promote your story. Um, and they can go in and they can register um, their own kind of username. And you will see, they'll be able to do that once Give Local goes live. Um, you you kind of see a sample of that here when you're on the fundraising page when it loads. Dun, 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 dun. Um, They'll get to go, you'll send them to your main um, give local story page and they'll come here where it says become a champion and they'll click get your personal share link. And then it'll take them through the prop. It'll send them an email with a link that says, you know, like here, start your account. Um, and they'll be able to click that. They'll fill in their information, you know, what's a good email, what's their what do they want their username to be? They want to set a goal. They'll do all of that. And once they've completed that, then you can do some of that editing that I showed you back here. Um, and so champions are really good for if you have some like volunteers who are interested in helping out. Um, board members are really good ones for that as well. Um, especially like pretty much, any, uh, especially folks who are pretty active online. Um, so if, you know, it doesn't matter really what online platform it is, it could be Facebook, Instagram, they just email people a lot. Uh, those are really good people to have as a champion because they can help just like send out the link to your story page, invite new people to learn about your organization or to donate. Um, hopefully both, but it doesn't always happen that way. Um, and there is, again, some small editing. There's, again, where you can do like the edit profile. You can suspend them, delete them. Um, and there was a question in the chat. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, there is the invite champions. Um, up here, and that'll be the same when you're on yours, there's gonna be that little option to invite champions. Um, but again, it has to be once we're live. So right now, it just shows up this funny little red blocking you out um, because the camp, because the whole initiative isn't live yet. Um, but it looks like we have another question. Um, Nikki, did you have a question? Yeah, so well, I think you just answered it. You said we couldn't kind of start 
a setup for our champions prior to it going live. Because sometimes, like, you know, if it's our board members, it's for us to kind of walk them through it. <laughs> our, um, you just said, just wait till it goes live and then and do that. Yeah, which is, you know, it's actually a big um, benefit of having the early giving week. Um, because that's a good time to get champions set up because you're not doing a whole lot of promotion during early giving. Right. Um, that's more of a time to set up champions. If you have um, like some, you have a couple of like key donors and like usually bigger gifts that you have lined up, you have them donate during early giving. So when we go live, live, you already have something that says, you know, like, hey, this organization is um already being supported and like oh maybe i should go and check out what they're doing because it seems like other people like them so maybe i should do like maybe i should learn more right and i know on other giving platforms they kind of have like a, a like a landing page for their champions or their peer-to-peer -peer campaigns does it look similar because i didn't we didn't kind of utilize that, that function last year so i don't are we able to kind of see what it would look like when they share? Uh, we cannot, unfortunately, at this point. Um, I think your best bet of being able to get some of that information um, and like viewing that is there's always this little like help um, page that this is the help center that is for like the overall the platform. Um, platform yeah and so this one um which i can't remember if i sent it out in the introductory email like I think, the yeah one. i think you did but i will send it out again um so that way you all have all of this information in a newer more recent email um but you should you might be able to find um some more samples of what it looks like um, when you search around through here. Thanks, Melissa. Yeah. Um, so now I'm like slightly off pace, uh, mostly because I lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> I guess, is there any other questions about the champions? Because also, again, feel free to contact me anytime if you run into issues with it. Um, and there are a really, champions are a really good tool to help get the word out for your organization, for the campaign. Um, the tricky part is sometimes if you don't have like volunteers or board members who are willing to sign up for it, which is still totally fine. Like. If you have people just forward the emails you send out to people, that's still a champion in my book. Um, they just don't have a whole, they don't have their own like mini profile for it. So um, yeah, so that would be champions in a nutshell. Uh, and those are pretty much all of the main things that are uh, those are like the primary parts of setting up your give local story and getting ready for us going live. Um, some of the optional features that we have um, is updates and story updates are in a nutshell, they're kind of, they're basically mini blog posts that show up on your fundraising page. And so these can be useful for a couple of different things. Um, one, you can use them to share recently uh, posted news, like e-newsletters that you have. If you have volunteer opportunities for your organization, maybe you were showcased in uh, an article, like a news article recently, I don't know, with the Olympian or with like Shelton Mason Journal or something like that, and you want to share some of that, you can. Um, you could also use it. Um, I don't I don't think it was with us, but it was with when I was like scrolling through uh, one time other organizations who use the same platform as us, some of the stuff that they did. Um, there were some folks who they basically, they used this, uh, they used the update section and created little uh, 
like bios for different like staff members or volunteers. And it was just, you know, you put in like a little picture um, and a little bit of text. And then it was just sharing people like, here is who makes up our organization and this is who helps us make a difference. And you can do all that by just, you'll add a post, you'll add a new post and you can put in an image, you have a little title for it. And then similar to like the other text editor uh, features that we've seen before, you have all these different formatting tools and inserting additional images. Um, you also have the ability to, you can just update to the story page or you can send out an email with it um, and make some templates, all that fun jazz, which I'll show you those in just a moment. Um, but you can save stuff, you can make these ahead of time, put it as a draft, release it later. Um, or if you're like, okay, well, this is no longer useful, you can archive it. And then it just makes it so it's not publicly viewable anymore. But anything that's archived can be brought back and republished. Uh, so then you'll have the filters that just show you what posts you have that are drafts, published, archived. Um, and you can, so talking about like in that, how I was saying like the email templates and stuff like that, you can go ahead and you can build like small little like elith, you know, like little like um, some like little lists of like pre-made people to send out emails to. So when you want to send people like an update, like, hey, we've posted this new story or, you know, something exciting has happened with our Give Local campaign, go check it out. Um, if you want it to send from this platform, you can build some of those in here. Uh, it is important to note um, that the platform designers, the platform does not save any of this, the contact information on like a back server. So it's, when you put it on here, it does not, like it gets sent temporarily to their like main overhead server and then just gets deleted. So they do not retain any of this email contact information that you upload in here. So, and they don't, so they don't retain it. They don't sell it. The only people who get to see it is you. Um, which at the same time makes things a little tricky when it comes to if you need help with stuff, but um, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> so yeah, you'll get to come in here and you can create some templates, subject names, addresses, um, type in individual email addresses and put it in here, who it's like who people would reply to and the text, all that kind of stuff. And you can send an email right then and there, or you can save the changes and save that template for later. And then there's like, you can add groups and this is where you would go in to um, build like that actual like email list. So um, there is also, you can upload. So if you already have some um, email lists, um, you can like, if you have like, if it's in like an Excel spreadsheet or whatever and stuff like that, you can upload those directly in here. So you don't have to do the whole like individually added in one by one. Um, or you can just not use this space. It's up to you either way. It's just a fun little feature. Um, we don't have to worry about the un, like manage unsubscribed because it, that's more for like if we're if we were doing this year round and you were sending out emails from here all the time. But since we aren't, there's no like annual subscribe. I guess like checkbox that people have to do to receive your emails. So. Um, another optional feature, uh, the rest of the optional features are found here under incentives. Um, because of a couple of mostly tax issues um, and like just the way things are like weirdly worded um, at our end, uh, we are still wor we're working on trying to bring them back in the future. But currently rewards and challenges are disabled for this year. 
um because it's yeah there's a lot of weird like tax stuff involved that is eh. um a little picky but we are hopeful that we'll be able to bring back some of these in the future um and but there are matches still so if you get um the big thing about matches is they're always exciting everyone likes to say like everyone likes to see that like their donation is you know doubled or tripled or whatever and stuff like that because they're like oh man i was like oh i felt bad because i was only able to donate 25 dollars, but hey there's this match that makes it 50 dollars, and i feel really good about that um and it's you know it's awesome it kind of invites people in to be like hey it doesn't matter how much you give um it is still worth it and it is fun it means it also shows that like you're supported by other organizations in the community or groups of people um and with matches uh we are asking that if you get a match so if you have say i'm I don't know why I just always think of Ralph Swiftway, but I do. Um, if you get, uh, if Ralph Swiftway is like, if you ask them and you're like, hey, would you be willing to sponsor a match for our Give Local story? And they were like, yeah, no, of course, you know, like here's a thousand dollars. You would have them send a check that is addressed and made out to the Community Foundation and it would put your, and then they need to put your organization dash give local in the memo. And then on our end, we will upload those matches into your campaign and get all of that set up. So that way you don't have to worry about like trying to figure out like whether or not you put it in correctly and stuff like that. Um, we will go ahead and add it in there for you. And this is where you will be able to view that information once it's uploaded um and the import uh the important thing to note is that we are um implementing more of a deadline for match sponsors in that we are asking that you have the match sponsors send us the donation or the funding essentially to us no later than november 1st so the start of early giving um, so that way we can have everything up and going and we're not, you know, doing playing a weird back and forth game with the sponsors and us during the Give Local campaign because it got a little messy last year. Um, and that would probably be, that falls definitely more on me for not preparing myself for that. <laughs> so learning, you know, live and learn each year. And so, yeah. Um, if you have more questions about matches, always feel free to reach out to me, um, RBC. Um, we're going to pause here in just a second for more questions, uh, because the last thing is that, again, when we talk about sponsors, you can add sponsors. Um, you would just basically, you can put their logo, their name, and their web address, um, so that way they can show up on your page that just shows that like, hey, these are some people, these are some other like organizations or just like large, like a corporation or something that support us. Uh, but again, don't have to put those in there. It is nice if you do have sponsors for Give Local. The, the last thing really that's optional feature is the hero section. And this is again, you can change the wording. It doesn't have to say heroes. That's just what it says. That's just how it starts on the back end. Um, but these are basically people who, if you want to have like basically like an extra like thank you, um, that it'll show up a little list of folks on your fundraising page that says, hey, this person met our threshold of like, oh, they donated like $100. We want to do an extra shout out to them. Um, you can set like a donation amount so that way anyone who donates that amount or above, they will be automatically listed as one of your heroes. On the flip side, you can also just manually add heroes. So if you, you can use, this is a space that somebody used last year where this is where instead of like the sponsor feature, they just added them in as heroes. So like 
they were you know like they had support from like local uh Kiwanis clubs and I'm trying to remember another one I think it was like a city of like Olympia or something I don't uh but <laughs> sorry rambling a little bit but yeah they they added them in here they just manually added in some of those like organizations that maybe they didn't know like they weren't like financial sponsors but they were like part like just like community partners somebody who you know like helped them put on another event earlier in the year or there's somebody who regularly helps them like organizations who maybe you work with local school districts all the time you could name some of the schools that you work in you can be like hey they're a hero because they're awesome and we partner with them and we think they do great work they think we do great work so give them an extra shout out and you would just you would just put in their name or the name of the organization kind of thing and then just add it and then boop, shows up so that is the long and short of <laughs> how to build your campaign i'm going to go ahead and stop sharing for a few seconds and wet my whistle and if anyone has any questions or wants me to go back over something let me know i've got a question melissa this is allison from the food bank um i had a lot of trouble with image sizing when uploading images to the updates page um there, there's a little crop window and a preview window but when i saved um the draft a partial image would show up that looks totally different than what the crop window was and then when you publish it so i had to just like do it a hundred times by you know just trial and error before i ever got it to be um what i wanted like a little story update kind of similar to a facebook post maybe it had a, a title you know like a little title banner at the top or the bottom and it was constantly cutting that off and i i checked in with help last year um, and i got the exact pixel size ratio everything that was recommended so i was doing it right to the exact specifications but it was still kind of a nightmare with the cropping and the preview not showing what was actually how it was actually cropped and i don't think we ever got it fully resolved but there was a lot of back and forth on it and it was kind of difficult. Do you no, remember? That's totally. Uh, yeah, no, I definitely remember we had some issues last year. Um, and what I have found, like I, again, like I'm with you, like I, we've, I've talked with like our help and stuff like that. And for the most part, like the, um, typically the biggest issues that show up with the image sizing and like images not showing up um, is one of is like the two big issues, two big things that pop up is if you have an image that you try to upload. Um, so not exactly relevant to what you're talking about, but just, you know, because it's a common thing that happens. Sometimes people they'll try and upload an image, they'll hit save. And at first it shows up in the preview, but then when you like reload your page or whatever, it doesn't show up anything. It's just like blank. Um, and that's typically because the title, um, the file name of the image is for this platform, it basically can't have anything. There's no, spe there can't be any special characters in your file name of an image. So you can have letters and numbers. You can't have like the underscrolls, periods, the little like parentheses. If you put any of those in there, it will show the picture up as like a sample, like it'll show like the sample of it, but then it will not actually like transfer over and save to the public page. Um, it's wild. I don't understand it exactly. Again, it's apparently something deeper than I am privy to. <laughs> um, and, uh, but talking more to what you were saying, Allison, is uh speaking with the help about that because yeah i definitely i followed up with them a lot and they were again it was more of what ended up happening is that the best that they could explain it to me in a way that i actually understood it because i was like okay you said a lot of stuff i need you to dumb it down pretend i'm five years old um and basically they explained to me is that well, it says the pixel sizes are the same. So it'll be like on your computer, it says that 
it's, you know, the image is 900 by 720 pixels. Um, and that's what the platform says it needs. Sometimes between like the different like softwares, like what they consider 900 pixels on like your computer and what the platform considers 900 pixels is somehow not actually like the same 900. How, I don't know, again, I'm not software tech. I don't know. I was like, that's the closest they could dumb it down to where I understood. <laughs> but there's just like a weird miscommunication. So sometimes when that happens, when it's, you have it fit to the exact specification. So it's telling you that it's 900 by 720. Um, but then on, when you upload it to the platform and it cuts some of it off, uh, you'll want to shrink it actually down further than that 900 and 720 because for whatever weird reason the hard part is you can't tell until you pub you have to basically publish it and then look at it and go oh darn and then quickly try to fix it um because the it's the problem is the crop window shows you what you're cropping and it, it's not what it's really cropping so that's the hard part is so it seems like there's no real fix besides just trial and error and and resizing yeah yeah, yeah i mostly just try to resize everything ahead of time. <laughs> I just purposely make all of my resizing smaller than what the recommendation is um, okay. to try and preemptively like lower that trial and error. Um, but it is something that like I've spoken with them about, about trying to get it more updated because there are other platforms where you can do more of this cropping and like mm -hmm. editing the image sizes like within the platforms themselves. Yeah. And I am like, I don't understand why we don't, why that's not a feature here. And it's something that they've, they have it on their list of many things to <laughs> upgrade <laughs> in the platform. Um, okay. And unfortunately, I've, they've different priorities, I guess, for different yeah. people. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> Sorry it. Sorry about that. I <laughs> wish okay. I had a better answer for you. Okay. And I forget is, is the, the the ratio at least at least if you have the ratio it's easier to resize it um but i forget if that was in the help or if that's actually on the main site so i'll look unless you know off the top of your head if they have recommendations um, right on the platform it's in some spots they have it in the platform um okay. other spots you find it in the help um it is also listed in our give local toolkit okay great um, thank you yeah all right uh any other questions Thoughts? Uh, Melissa, I had a quick question um, about matching. So uh, they send you, let's say, whoever it is, uh, you, you threw out Ralph, Ralph Switchway before. Let's just do that one again. They send in $1,000 with the um, Puget Sound Estuarium in the memo uh, dash give local. And um, so is is that something where you all set the actual match like uh you know um uh, south puget sound community foundation sets the match or do we set the match how does that work so we set the match on the platform okay. um yeah you as the organization stuff you with you know like again using ralph's thriftway you and ralph's thriftway will you know, kind of plan out together how you want the funds to be distributed. If you want it to do like a, say you want it to be like a two for one. So like somebody donates $1, it's matched with another dollar. Um, if you want it to be boosted where it's like somebody donates $1 and then it, uh, the match boosts it up to $5. Um, you can figure that out. Um, you would just let us know what that conclusion is and then um, will make it happen in the platform. So then I would make that arrangement with Ralph Thriftway. Um, and then I would just email you and say, Hey, you're going to get this check. We want to do a match of like $5 for every $1 or something like that. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Thank and then, you. Yep. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Cause the, there's a couple of weird little like drop down options. Cause they're like, they try to make it. So there's like, Oh, you can do it like this way, this way, this way. And we're like, what? Um, and it gets hard to kind of like convey that, especially prior to like the actual start of the event, because it's one of those things again, where it's like, 
it it only lets you see so much of it before we actually go live. So like with the champions, you can't send people an invite until the event started. Well, some of that's the same with like the matching, like it doesn't look quite the same until we actually start. And so that's, that's where we got some of our mix-ups last year was it was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> like, right, okay, I got so, you. So, and it's, yeah, it's just kind of hard to explain it like ahead of time. And so we're just like, you know, it's easier if it's just like, we'll just put it in. You just let us know what you want to do with it and we will make it happen. Thank you. Any other questions? Matches, getting signed in. Something that I'm just thinking of uh, because I've had a couple of people reach out recently and I imagine I will get more. Um, so, which is totally fine. Um, it's weirdly worded, uh, but just a heads up that like, again, you do have to uh, when you first registered your organization for Give Local, it sent you like an automatic email that had a link that says like review your submission, something along those lines. I always forget what the specific wording was. Um, and that when you click that link, that's what kind of activates your account. So whether it's you've done this before in the past and you already have like an email account with us and everything, you still have to click that link and connect your account to this new, um, your new Give Local story. And what they also don't put in that email and I keep telling them they should, um, or they should let me be the one that sends out these automated emails, I don't know, um, is those links expire within 48 hours. So if you did not click that link within 48 hours and you try and click it now, nothing will happen. Um, or it'll pop up and say like, you know, like this, you know, it'll be like, there's an error with this link. Um, and there's not um, a way. And then if you try to like go to like mycommunityfunded.com and you try and use your login, it won't show you this year's campaign. It won't show you this year's story yet. Um, but easy fix, you just let me know and I can resend you that link. So, which is no big deal. It takes like, 30 seconds to do. So more than happy to help you out if you are having issues getting logged in. All right, well, perfect. Well, we're almost at the end. So before we go, is there any last minute questions that someone thought of? No, all right, well, perfect. Well, yeah, again, feel free to um, always reach out to me um, just in case you don't have my email. Uh, I will go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, Melissa, did you yeah. say that you were going to just email everyone a, the, a copy of this recording? Yes. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll email the recording. I'll email the slides that also have kind of like a, another like little visual of some of the things that I talked about. Um, okay. I didn't show you all the PowerPoint slides just because that's always a boring presentation. So, um, and yeah, I'll also send in, I'll also be sending some of the, like the other links that I talked about. So like the one to the help page and like the mycommunityfunded.com where you actually go to log in. Thank you very much. All right, no problem. Well, perfect. Well, everyone, I hope you have a great rest of the day, you know, halfway through the week. So thanks for being awesome. local, everybody. All right.